Hi, this is your host, Sapni Bharti, and we are almost here at the end of 2020, and we are eagerly awaiting for 2021, which will bring a lot of fresh and positive uh, vibes uh, for us um, to, to have a peek into 2021 from AI, ML, all those perspectives. Today, we have with us our own wizard, Lee Kang. He's head of North America of Intelligence. Uh, Lee, first of all, it's great to have you on the show. Thank you for having me. So before I ask you to go grab your crystal ball and have a peek into 2021, I would love to learn a bit about the company itself. Tell me what problem are you guys trying to solve? What is your target there? Kaligens was uh, founded by the creators of Apache Kailin project. Back in 2015, Kailin, Apache Kailin became the uh, top level project at Apache Software Foundation. And then the next year, uh, the team decided to uh, uh, form a company because of the demand uh, for this product, for this technology. We address uh, the most challenging uh, analytical problems on the big data platform and in the cloud. Awesome, perfect. Now I would request you to grab your crystal ball and tell me what predictions do you have for 2021? Well, 2020 obviously has been a very strange year and hopefully in 2021, we're going to see a lot of changes, right? Uh, the top three things on my mind uh, that uh, I would like to share with uh, the audience is uh, the first prediction is uh, I would say we're going to see more SaaS software companies start offering advanced, sophisticated analytics capabilities. Whether this is a add-on component to the SaaS product they've been offering or it's a brand new product in their uh, po uh, uh, portfolio. Uh, we're going to see these SaaS companies, you know, they have been offering uh, business processes or uh, uh, business transaction applications over the last uh, several years, and they've accumulated large amount of data and customers have been using those products for certain business functions. So what we're going to see next is the, these SaaS vendors sit on top of a rich set of uh, transactional data sets, and they can offer analytical capabilities to their users. And so that will help them to uh, their end users to improve business uh, efficiencies, to get more insights, to become more competitive. And this include not only their own uh, uh, transactional data, but also the industry benchmarks. Of, of course, at an aggregated level, right? So it benefits the customers in terms of giving them more insights. It also gives the, uh, the SaaS software vendors an extra uh, revenue stream, if you will. So uh, we've already helped a uh, couple customers in the last year with this type of offerings, and uh, we're definitely seeing uh, more SaaS uh, companies uh, you know, providing those capabilities as a competitive uh, advantage as well as a new uh, revenue stream. The second uh, prediction uh, or trend that we are seeing is uh, what we call the unified semantic layer in the enterprise. Semantic layer is traditionally where you will uh, bridge between the technical details, uh, whether you know it's applications, database, tables, columns, that kind of technical information and uh, the a higher level business context, there is a needs to be a, a translation layer between these two uh, uh, layers, if you will. Uh, traditionally, this is done in the BI tools, but these days we are seeing companies. Uh, you know, most enterprises have more than one BI product. So, how do I have a consolidated uh, semantic layer across di these different BI products? build a standard uh, tech, uh, business context, whether it's uh, advanced calculations or simple business definitions, right? So that I can satisfy all my business users, uh, no matter what uh, BI tools or products they use. And uh, uh, when they move from one BI product to another BI product, or even I can build my own uh, front end uh, uh, applications, I don't Worry, I don't have to worry about losing these um, uh, business context or the uh, uh, I don't have to worry about defining uh, security 
so across all these environments, or I don't have to worry about uh, the calculations uh, maybe uh, you know wrong in one environment and or inconsistent compared between the environments. So this kind of a unified semantic layer, right, that can uh, consolidate the technical uh, definitions across different format, across different system, even across different cloud platform, and make it available to all the front end. Uh, BI applications, data science applications, or homegrown, uh, 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 you know, the front end UIs. So that is going to be critical for the uh, uh, companies uh, entering the new year. The third prediction I would uh, say is the um, analytics capability across multiple, uh, multi-cloud. So uh, we have seen uh, enterprises have been moving uh, or migrating towards the cloud environment in the last uh, several years. And people are uh, uh, starting using uh, different cloud infrastructures for different uh, uh, applications or different workloads, right? Depends on what services best uh, fits their requirements. So you have data uh, basic distributed in many different applications in many in different uh, cloud uh, infrastructure. So how do I run analytics or data science jobs effectively across these different systems and across different cloud uh, environments and without uh, violating the regulatory requirements, you know, because not only your data is in different cloud, but they, mo they may also be uh, stored in different uh, countries or different uh, regions. So the analytics capabilities uh, sits on top of different cloud environment, uh, can provide an uh, effective and cost efficient way to enable the enterprise to analyze all the data sets. So that is what we call a part of the pervasive analytics uh, for data anywhere and everywhere across multiple cloud environments. Uh, Lee, thank you so much for taking time out today and talk about uh, these predictions. I would love to have you back on the show in maybe uh, December 2021 to see how many of your predictions turn out to be true. Uh, but uh, all jokes apart, once again, thank you. And I look forward to talking to you again. Thank you. Thank you very much. 